last video, I found a few things off the Kirkland's website that I was inspired to recreate using items from the Dollar Tree. This time I'm back at it again with three brand new crafts all inspired by Kirkland's. Now that spring is here, I'm really inspired to add more greenery and florals to my home decor and these planters are a perfect way to do that. From the Dollar Tree, I grabbed two packs of these bamboo rings. There's two different sizes in here. I'm only going to use the smaller one today, but with both packs, you could make two different size planters. I'm also using a pack of the craft sticks from the Dollar Tree, and I'm gonna use a few wooden beads that I already have on hand to act as feet. I wanted to create a base for my bottom ring first. I could have used cardboard here or chipboard or anything just to be able to set a plant on, but I thought since I had this whole pack of craft sticks, I may as well use them up. And the craft sticks were a perfect fit. They fit exactly across the center of these smaller rings. So I just started gluing around the edges of the ring. I started laying my craft sticks on. You can see the one in the middle there, it fit just perfectly from end to end and then as I worked my way down to one end it started to overlap and that was okay because after I had all of the craft sticks on I went through with my utility knife and just started cutting off the excess. These craft sticks are pretty thin that you get from the Dollar Tree so it was pretty easy to cut through these and I always find that it's easier to make a few light passes rather than trying to cut through the whole stick at once. So I'm just taking my utility knife here and I'm making a few passes just to get the excess off. And remember, this is the bottom of the planter. You're not actually going to be able to see it. I just thought this was a neat way to use up some craft sticks rather than cutting a piece of cardboard. After all the excess was cut off, I did go through with a sanding block and just remove any sharp edges just to make sure that I didn't get any splinters. When I need to cut a bunch of craft sticks down to the same length, I always like to use my paper trimmer. So I'm using those same craft sticks from the Dollar Tree. I'm cutting the rounded edge off of one side and then I'm just measuring out five inches and cutting it again so that my planter will be five inches tall. Putting this plant holder together was really simple. I just started adding hot glue to the base piece that I had created on the outside of the ring and I just lined my craft stick up. You can see I have my silicone mat here. This just helps protect my work surface and it also helps make sure that I can line up the bottom of the craft stick with the bottom of the ring. Once I had a few rings in place, then I went through and I hot glued the other end to the second ring so that I could space these out a little bit more even. Evenly. Once I had a few of the craft sticks hot glued onto one side of my plant holder, I jumped over to the other side because I noticed that it had started to droop. So this just made it a little bit easier to keep it even on both sides. So I'm doing the same thing on this second side here. I'm just adding hot glue to the bottom ring and the top ring and I'm holding my craft stick in place there. I kept my craft sticks fairly close together. That's the main difference between this one and the one on the Kirkland's website. The Kirkland's ones, the vertical pieces were a little bit farther apart. So it's up to you how you decide to do yours. But I like the look of mine with the craft sticks a little bit closer together. Here's where you can decide what will fit your home's decor the best. For me, I really like the look of the natural wood, but I also like that distressed look. So I'm taking some white chalk paint here and I'm just dry brushing over the surface, leaving some of that wood show through. You could buy fancier feet for your plant stand, but I'm all about using up what I already have. And since I already had these white wooden beads on hand, I just hot glued these to the bottom. You could pay over a hundred dollars for this set of three plant hangers, but with a few things from the Dollar Tree, you can make it for a lot less. I grabbed one of these oval tins that you can find at the Dollar Tree. They usually have these year round, but they especially have them now that it's garden time. I grabbed two of the peel and stick tiles and you can see the pattern on these is almost exactly like the Kirkland's ones. And I also grabbed one of the plant hangers that you can find out now. I have this tool in my craft stash. It's by We Are Memory Keepers. It's called a Cropodile, and it's a great way to poke holes through things that are a little bit thicker, like tin or chipboard or things like that. You can see it makes a really nice hole there. So I needed to poke two holes on one side and one hole on the other since this plant hanger does have three chains coming down from it. If you don't have this tool, you could use a hammer and nail and just hammer it through just so that the hole's big enough to fit the hook from the plant hanger through. 
I wanted to get a better idea of the shape of this tin, so I grabbed my roll of craft paper and I just laid it over the tin and pressed down on it so that it would give me an idea of what kind of shape I needed to cut out of the peel and stick tile. If I would have just laid the tile right over top of it, it would have buckled slightly. So I needed to get the correct curve in order for the tile to fit on it more properly. I'm using a pencil here to sketch out the two lines that I created just so that you can see it a little better. And then I just cut that shape out with my scissors so that I could transfer it onto the peel and stick tile. I kept the adhesive backing on the back side of the tile because I didn't want my paper to stick to it. And I'm tracing from the back side. You can see I moved the, the line up a little bit. The first time I traced it, it was in the wrong spot. So I had to move it up. This tile is really easy to cut through. It's a very thin plastic. It's two layers. So I was able to cut through it with no problem with just my regular scissors. And at first I thought I was going to need two tiles for this tin because I didn't think that I would be able to get two strips of the same size out of one tile. But it turns out that there was enough space on one tile that I was able to take this same first piece that I used and just trace it again on the same tile so that I could have two pieces, one for the front side and one for the back side. And you can see the tile is two pieces and it's only connected on the edges. So I did lay just a little bit of hot glue down through the center so that the two pieces were connected and they wouldn't flop around. It can be a little tricky getting things to attach to metal like this. So I started with some E6000 glue and I just added a bit on the front side of my tin. I used a craft stick to smooth it out so there weren't any large clumps or bubbles. And then I peeled the backing off of the peel and stick tile and laid it over top. I also went through with some hot glue on the very edges of the tile just to make sure that everything was really held in place. So essentially we have <laughs> three different types of adhesive on here. So I don't think this tile is gonna go anywhere. Now you can see once I had the tile laid over the tin, there was some excess and because this tile is so easy to cut, I just went through with my scissors and cut off any of the overhang. Once I had the tile pieces on both the front and back side of the tin, I went back through with my crocodile tool again and because I could see where I had already punched those holes, I could line it up and punch it again. Unfortunately, this tile was not long enough to go the whole way around the tin and I didn't really care for how it looked on the sides where the two tiles didn't quite overlap. So to remedy that, I decided to cover it up with something else. I cut off some of the excess tile first because it was a bit bulky on the sides. And then I used some hot glue just to glue down both pieces of the tile to make sure that it was nice and flat. Before moving on to the sides, I wanted to give my planter that age distress look. So I'm using some white chalk paint and a chippy brush and I'm doing a pretty heavy coat. I wanted a lot of the white to show through and to really show off the pattern on this tile. I found some burlap ribbon in my stash that had some pretty lace running through it and it was the perfect width to cover up that spot where those tiles didn't meet. So I did a bit of hot glue to the bottom of the planter and then I held the ribbon in place with the glue and some clear tape. I ran some glue up the sides and you can see it's the perfect width to cover up both of those raw edges from the tile. Then I just needed to add some hot glue towards the inside of the planter, tuck my ribbon into it and keep it secure with another piece of clear tape. Tape. I think the planter looks good as is, but since I added the burlap ribbon to the sides, I wanted to pull some of that color through the front of the planter also. I have this really thin jute rope that I got from Amazon, and I just did a small bead of hot glue around the bottom of the planter and laid the rope into it, and then I repeated that on the top. This not only pulled that color from the burlap through the planter, but it also helped cover up any of the raw edges from where I had cut the tile. Before adding adding any flowers to my planter, I wanted to attach this plant hanger. It was really easy with the clips provided. And if you didn't want to use this as a hanging planter, you could use it as a standalone centerpiece also. I 
love succulents and I love how big this succulent holder from Kirkland's is. It measures about 12 by 12. For this project, I just needed two packs of the tumbling tower blocks from the Dollar Tree. And these were the bigger boxes, the one that has 72 in it. I needed to create the four walls for my planner to start. So I'm using a T-square here and my big silicone mat just to help prevent any hot glue from getting on my surface. I started by lining up six of the tumbling tower blocks and just gluing them in a straight line. Now I wanted to brick lay my tumbling tower blocks because I am going to make each wall of my planter about four rows high. So there's a couple different ways you could cut these tumbling tower blocks. I have these miter shears that I get from Amazon and they will cut through them but it does take a good bit of hand strength to get the blocks cut. If you don't think you could use something like that you could use um just a regular handsaw and a miter box to cut these blocks in half. Or if you wanted to avoid cutting these at all, you could just create four rows of six blocks and not brick lay them. They could just line up on top of each other. I think either way it would look good. I just really wanted to try out the brick lay pattern and I wanted to see if I could really cut through these blocks with my miter shears. So for the second row on this wall, you can see I laid one of my half blocks down and then I laid five full blocks down and my other half block on the other end. That way when I stack the two rows together it'll brick lay the Jenga blocks from each other. And like I said I need four rows for each wall of my planter. So that means I need about 24 blocks for each side so you'll need 96 blocks altogether. That's why I had two packs of the tumbling tower blocks there. And I got my third row done here. Now I'm just using hot glue on these. You could use wood glue if you wanted to but I always have pretty good luck with the Gorilla Glue Sticks. They seem to hold wood pretty well. I've not really had anything fall apart on mine when I'm just using the glue sticks on the wood. So again on the fourth row for the wall of my block. I'm just cutting one of the Jenga blocks in half. Now these Jenga blocks are just slightly smaller than two inches so I cut my blocks down to about one inch in size. And again, I did the same thing with the fourth row. I started with one of the half blocks. I glued down five of the full blocks and then I put another half block on the opposite end. After I had all four rows of my tumbling tower blocks assembled, then I could go through with my hot glue and glue the four rows together. I started with one of the rows that had the six whole blocks in it, and then on top of that I laid one of the rows that had the half blocks. And then I repeated that again for rows three and four. Now like I said, I chose to make my box four rows high, but it's up to you how high you want to make yours. You could make this higher or shorter, either way it would look good. Also, try not to stress about the rows being a little uneven or there being some gaps in between some of the blocks. I just think that adds to the uniqueness of a handmade planter. Once I had all four walls of my box assembled, I wanted to give it a little more stability. So on the back side of each of my walls, I'm just taking some craft sticks and I ran them on a diagonal just to hold most of the blocks together. I'm using my T-square again here to help line up the walls of my box. I'm using the same Gorilla Glue hot glue sticks to put everything together and you can see I lined the first two up first and I the key that I found to make sure that this was nice and sturdy is to really hold those two pieces in place while the glue sets. If you move on too fast that glue is going to be warm and you run the risk of having the two pieces come apart. So once that was set in place then I just moved it over to the other side and using some hot glue again I just just glued on the third wall and then I repeated that again for the fourth wall. Once all four sides of my box were put together, I wanted to reinforce those corners a bit more. So on the inside of the box where the two pieces met, I added a generous amount of hot glue just to give it more stability and make sure that my box was nice and sturdy. I did that in all four corners of my box. If you wanted to take the time to create a bottom for your box out of some more of the tumbling tower blocks, you could do that. But I wanted to make mine a bit simple, so I'm just using a piece of heavyweight chipboard and I cut it down to fit my box. I used a little bit of hot glue just to glue it onto the bottom. And once again, for added stability, I went through and added a good amount of hot glue where the chipboard and the bottom of the box met. 
Before going through and adding my succulents to my box, I took some white chalk paint and I gave a pretty heavy coat. I let a little bit of the wood show through, but I mostly wanted it to be white. And I really like once I added the paint that you could really see the seams in between each of the blocks. I think it just gave this box a nice character. Now because this box is so big, it measures about 12 inches by 12 inches, I had to use a lot of floral foam in it. And then I also covered up that foam with some moss. You can see most of the floral foam that I had were scrap pieces that I had laying around, which actually worked out perfect to get those out of my stash. But when I show you the finished picture, you'll see that I did add a pretty good amount onto my finished piece. I think I did an extra $20, just because if you didn't have floral foam laying around and if you didn't have a lot of succulents in your craft stash that would cost a good bit of money to get this box filled because it is so big but even though I did have to the, spend that extra cost getting the floral foam and the succulents in there it's still a lot cheaper than if I would have bought the Kirkland's version. Thanks so much for hanging out with me again today. If you need even more crafting inspiration, check out one of the videos I left on the screen. I hope you have a great week and I'll talk to you in the next one.